Hello, my favorite chemistry students. We're going to start talking about the elements. How many words can you make up with these few letters? A few, a lot, a ton? Just like we can take letters, mix them up and make different words, we can take elements and mix those up into different compounds. And just a few elements can make tons of compounds. There's about 88 naturally occurring elements, and those give us all of the compounds we need and a few we don't need. If we look at the Earth's crust, oceans, and atmospheres, oxygen in some form makes up 49.2% of all three of those things. And when I say oxygen in some form, I could mean O2, like the air we breathe. You can find it in water. You can find it in carbon dioxide. I could keep going. But oxygen in some form is found the most if I combine the crust, the oceans, and the atmosphere. If I just look at the atmosphere, where's my pen? Pen. Oh, there you are. If I find look at just the atmosphere, what makes up most of the atmosphere? 70 what? 8% of our atmosphere is actually nitrogen, and only 21% of our atmosphere is oxygen. But at all three of these things, oxygen's the big one. In our bodies, oxygen in some form makes up 65%. 18% of our bodies is carbon, 10% hydrogen, 3% nitrogen, and the rest, well, a variety of different things. Here's the biggest problem with the word element, is the word element could mean one single atom. Like we have one atom of hydrogen or one atom of sodium or one atom of copper, just a single atom could mean an element. The word element could also mean a bunch of identical atoms, like a whole bunch of gold atoms and have so much of it you can actually weigh it on a scale. And the word element could also mean the generic form of that element. In some form, there's oxygen in the human body. It's the generic version of that word. You do need to know the names and the symbols for the elements so you can learn to speak chemistry in quite fluently. So oxygen, chlorine, uranium, krypton, those are pretty straightforward. Where it gets different is things like iron. Iron symbol is Fe, and that's Latin for ferrous. Potassium symbol, well, that's K, and it has to do with its Latin name, Calium. Mercury is Latin for HG, and I'm not saying that. Nope, not saying it. However, it does mean um, quicksilver, because mercury kind of looks like silver, doesn't it? Like liquid silver. And sodium is NA, that's Latin for natrium. So some of our symbols come from the Latin names and some of them don't. One of the things you're going to have to learn how to do, and by the way, if you know what this is, the chemical formula, jot it down, show me it's worth an extra point. But one of the things that you're going to have to learn how to do is identify what the elements are and how many of each one there are. So for instance, we have the symbol for carbon. And that subscript, sub meaning below the line, see we write the six just a little below the line, and that means we have six atoms of carbon. Then H then is the symbol for hydrogen. The 12 says, hey, we've got 12 hydrogen atoms. Then symbol for oxygen. And we now know that we have six atoms of oxygen in this compound. To review. Of the Earth, oxygen makes up almost 50% of the crust, oceans, and atmosphere. And oxygen also makes up most of our body. The word element can mean a single atom. It could mean a whole bunch of atoms. Or it could mean some sort of generic form of that atom. Symbols come in two ways. One, ways that make sense, like this is Kr for krypton. 
and ones that don't make quite as much sense, which is Na is for sodium. And we need to learn how to count how many atoms are in each formula. Like I did for this one up here, we're going to go over some more practice on that later. Up next, great ideas in chemistry.